Welcome, Rob. We're so glad to know that you're still there and watching the, the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Uh, I'm still Yamgul Agati. My name hasn't changed, and I hope that uh, you're having a field day. We've just had the weather report uh, here in Lagos. It rained in some parts, and in other parts, it's dry. That's the beauty of nature. It can be raining on one side of the building, and the other side will be dry. It happens. I've seen it before. Anyway, uh, right now it's time to visit w the press and see what uh, is happening, what the headlines are for today. And we're beginning this morning with Nature News, only fitting because today is World Environment Day. And what are the things uh, on Nature News this morning? So on Nature News, uh, we have... Um, the headline that is leading there is Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Seaway, Nestle, top plastic waste contributors in Nigeria. Uh, it's a concern for people now that we're celebrating World um, Environment Day. We also have AFDB appoints Ofori Mante as acting director of agricultural finance and rural development. Soludo moves to ban sand mining in Anambra, gives reasons. You'll find that on page 11. NNPC winds down crude oil swap contracts. That is on page 9. Um, there's also headlines on page 11. UN appoints AFDB's president as member of SUN. Okay. Subsidy removal, NLC held bent on strike actions, writes NUJ, ASU, others to join the strike. And then finally, stakeholders to dialogue on plastic pollution at Nature News uh, commemoration of World Environment Day. Remember today is World Environment Day and um, the theme for today is Beat Plastic Pollution, Ecosystem Restoration. It's hosted by Côte d'Ivoire and supported by the Netherlands. We move to the next uh, newspaper, that is The Punch. The Punch newspaper leads with subsidy. NLC shuns federal government's meeting. Electricity workers back strike. The writers there are NLC false negotiation team. Lagos, Nasarawa, more state chapters join the strike. TUC demands salary increase. Fuel importers seek equal access to Forex. Okay, that's still under uh, fuel subsidy. Uh, under there, right under, you have OPEC raises Nigeria's output as Saudi Arabia cuts production. 18 die in Kano crash, FRSC boss warns against overloading. And then NL, NDLEA seizes 390 kilograms of illicit drugs in four states. Um, up there at the top of that front page of the punch, you have Senate queries Accountant General over 910 billion MDA's loan. That story is on page 37. Trapped funds, foreign airlines plan meeting with federal government. That is on page 38. And on page 7, PDP wants Tinubu to make asset declaration public. Okay, uh, we move from the punch to the Guardian. The Guardian newspaper leads with auto gas stalls as NNPC marketers bicker over 500 billion naira debt prorated fuel cost. We also have NLC boycotts meeting as federal government to EU see seek options out for Wednesday strike. There's also a story on why Tinubu has not appointed a spokesperson. Okay, so you find those reasons on news page three on The Guardian. Yoruba Ronu uh, urges Tinubu to prevent labor union strike. Nigeria's broadband penetration drops as tel telcos lose 2.5 million voice customers. Seven days into second term, Somalu yet to make appointments. That's still on the Guardian. Terrorists kill many in Zamfara communities, abduct 30 girls. Uh, those are headlines on uh, the Guardian. And we will move to the next uh, uh, newspaper. 
The next newspaper and the final one for the day is Business Day. Business Day leads with Nigeria's oil revenue at risk as OPEC plus cuts output. Petrol price hike puts millions of businesses on edge. That's the big story there on page four, or it starts on page one and continues on page four. Who collected over 11 trillion Buhari spent on petrol subsidy? Is a question being asked. There's an explainer for that on page 35. And then um, I think those are the headlines that we will take from uh, the business day as well. And that is the final uh, newspaper for this morning. But we're very glad that uh, today to help us make sense through some of the headlines that we have heard here today uh, is uh, Opunabo Nko Taria, political affairs analyst who is joining us from the River State. Uh, good morning and welcome, Opunabo. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Okay. Um, let's begin with uh, the headline which is not so bold on uh, the punch, but it nevertheless, or nonetheless, it's still a very, very important one. PDP wants Tinubu to make asset declaration public. Uh, the question is, isn't that just a given that once you are uh, a elected into public office, even before you're elected into public office, this asset declaration should be made. What are your thoughts on the fact that it has to take PDP to call for this asset declaration? Well, um, asset declaration is a constitutional requirement. I mean, it, it, you must, as a public officer, declare your assets before and after office. It is even a crime if you fail to do so. But what the PDP is saying is it, it wants Tinubu to declare his assets publicly. Uh, the law does not require public declaration of assets. You declare to the uh, to the government, to the uh, what is it called bureau? What is that thing called again? I forgot it. In charge of asset declaration, you declare to them, but. You see, uh, Nigerians are not comfortable with that. We want the asset declaration made public, just like uh, Yeradua did. Mm. And that will help to scrutinize whoever is in office. So that if you declare publicly, we now know by the time you're exiting office uh, what you're going to declare, because it's also mandatory that you declare what you're going to declare. And with that, we will now know if you're lying and uh, if you also um, stole some money or stole whatever. The whole essence is to curb theft, is okay. to curb embezzlement and other vices. But that whatever, is why whatever, the law may what, whatever body, whatever the law body, does not make it mandatory for you to publicly. That is where the problem is, and that is what people are advocating. It must be public because you are in office. You are you are there. You, and you're managing public funds, you're not managing your own funds, so you must make it public so that the world can scrutinize at the end of your tenure if you uh, were involved in any form of graft or not. Okay, but how, how secret is this document? Because freedom of information uh, gives you, or gives the citizens right to even sometimes very sensitive documents. How secret is this document? Because if it is uh, where anybody can access it, then there wouldn't be need to even call for a public declaration. What do you think? Now, now I completely agree with you, but you see, the problem there is uh, based in the, in the office, and that's uh, what I'm trying to, to remember the name, the office in charge of asset declaration. Uh, if you can jog my memory a little bit, please. <laughs> now, the, the fact is, with the FOI Act, Everybody has access to any information anywhere except the ones classified as, or uh, the ones that are classified. In any, every country in the world, you have classified documents. And that is why, even when um, the former president of America went through with some classified documents, he was sued. I think he's facing that, those charges right now. But then, yes, you have the FBI Act. And the asset declaration shouldn't form a, a classified document. It shouldn't be a group of classified documents. 
But the truth is, those in charge are in most cases reluctant for you to have access to them. And I can't really comprehend why it should be the case. Maybe they are doing that because they want to ingratiate themselves with those in office. Maybe they can say uh, the journalists or certain persons are asking for your declaration. And you know that if I make it available to them, these are the consequences. Mm. Maybe. And in so doing, they might have some form of uh, our gratitude or gratification and so on. Probably. Otherwise, there is really no sense in why you are going to uh, make those sort of declarations secret. Because it really negates the whole essence of asset public, asset the whole, I don't public, the whole essence of asset declaration. It's going to negate the whole essence. But sadly, that is what is going on. And I can tell you that most journalists have tried to have access to certain declarations and they were denied. They were tried outrightly denied, which ought not to be the case, especially with the Air Force I but that is what we see in this country. But can't that um, a bureau, I think it's Code of Conduct Bureau, can't they be sued? Code of Conduct Bureau, yeah. Can't they be sued for, for withholding information that the public needs? Well, if you go to court, all you're going to get is a uh, mandamus compelling uh, the Code of Conduct, Conduct Bureau to have, let you have access to it. That is, that's what you're going to get. And I, I don't know if um, some persons tried it, and I don't know the outcome. But it is within your virus, it is you are right to sue. And I think the court granted them access to it, but how, if, if they were actually granted access, I don't really know about it. I can't, I can't really recall. But you can, why not? You can. But you know, in this country, uh, most court orders are flouted. Mm. The only court orders that are executed are orders that are in favor of the government. Mm. <laughs> that is the truth about it. Most of the others are flouted. You can imagine that of my, uh, the, former, the present EFCC chairman, the Secretary General of Police, mm. and a whole lot of them. Most of the others are flouted. Even the prior former president flouted the others. If you really have the issue of them, they cannot still in detention and so on. Most of the others are flouted. And because the court doesn't have what it takes to enforce its orders, because you need the police to enforce your, the court orders. And the police belongs to the executive arm. And it's, it's, it's related just to the government and not in the court. Unless you're, you're more or less in court, a common man, then you, you even before the government is given to the first. But if you if, if belong to the uh, cream, you're not cream. I mean, they're just, it's just like pouring water at the back of the top of, of, of uh, the dump arm. Well, that, that's serious. Um, well, okay. Um, let's go to another issue. Uh, the NLC is spoiling for a fight, that saying that there will be uh, a strike action, and electricity workers have joined. Uh, if they were called for a meeting. TUC attended the meeting. NLC didn't go, and they're insisting that a legitimate body should be set up by the federal government to uh, hear their complaints and proffer solutions to what is uh, going on uh, the, or their grievances. Other bodies are also asking that if the fuel subsidy must stay, there should be an increment in salaries and so on and so forth. Uh, do you think this is a solution and not a strike action on top of the fuel subsidy? What are your thoughts? Well, in all honesty, the language the Nigerian government hears or understands is strike action. And in most cases, even when you have a strike action, the government will employ what I call the Fabian policy. They will invite you to a meeting, an endless meeting, just like it did. Shame, 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 shameful. An endless meeting, and all they are doing is to buy time. Now, talking of the fuel subsidy, first, this is one government that will be enmeshed in perfidy. You remember, the first, what, the, what uh, the president said was that subsidy is gone. Mm. Then when he now realized the Ferrari generated, somebody came trying to, in a flaccid manner, explain that that was not what the president meant. Mm. And was trying to um, also, in another breath, justify it by saying, 
it was not in the budget. It was not in the budget. I agree with you. But then, it was supposed to have ended June. And Nigerians were preparing their mind towards that. You came and carelessly, without a twinge of conscience, said subsidy was gone. And that was what triggered the chain reaction. What we are seeing is a corollary effect of that pronouncement. We live in a country where it is socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. If you want to actually, yes, it was not included in the budget. But your predecessor was smart enough not to have affected it. Because he knew the consequences, the domino effect, and the reactions. He was smart enough. You ought to know why the, your predecessor refused to stop the source. You know, you should know why he said, because you were part and parcel of that, why he said, no, let me transfer this body and pay to my successor. You came on board because probably you own filling stations, probably you're involved in the oil uh, uh, business. You know that you're going to profit more from it. You decided to remove the subsidy. Before you remove subsidy, what you would have considered was to ensure that certain things are in place everywhere, anywhere in the world before certain actions are taken. It takes a long time. They plan. It might take four years, three years, two years. You have to increase the salary of workers because you have to palliate the asperities to remove our will cause. You have to increase the salary of workers. You have to provide buses. And even if you want to buy a thousand buses, even if you have the money, you can't just go to the shop to buy a thousand buses. It's not possible. Then it's not available. You have to ensure that electricity, electricity is in place. Because the Nigerian economy, as we speak today, shamefully, depends on generator. Generator. All businesses, medium, small, all, they depend on generator. Look at the cost of diesel. And look at the effect it's having on industries. Most of them are folding up. Then if you talk of the small scale, this is uh, past my neighbor. You find out that even when with that, even without the removal of subsidy, the prices of things went up because they have to factor the issue of the uh, purchase of petrol. You can't go to a public saloon while cutting your head, there's power outage, and the barber will tell you go. No, you've got a power generator. So that is already factored. So whether there is power outage or not, it's already factored into the cost. So when you consider all these things, you must ensure that you put into consideration this into, and also provide remedies before you talk of removal of subsidies. What of our refineries? Trillions spent on the refineries for around maintenance. This same group. You can a volatile press, a volatile cannot generate it. Because he was one of those who said in six months, in one year, two years, they are going to fix all the refineries. He can he opened his mouth to see. He was a leader of he's the a leader of the so he's still the leader because as president he's the leader of the What happened to our refineries? Trillions of dollars spent on turnaround intelligence. Yes, they are still commanders. Why not fix the refineries for the government? Look at one man built a refinery. And the country is depending on the efficacy of the refinery. Is that not a shame? Why didn't you fix those refineries before you talk about the resources? Must you remove it immediately? You shouldn't. Yes, you say you want to. The, yes, you said the subsidy was a fraud on that general. Now you come to agree that it's a reality. Okay, you want to medicate the economy. So much has been spent on fuel subsidy. No problem. But then it's like giving, it's like asking the tenant to get out of your house. There is a process. You don't just get up to the house, talk, come on, get. You don't do that. There is a process. Mm -hmm. You serve it notice. If you stop on, you go to court and so on. That is what you expect anywhere in the world. And there is no country that does not subsidize one thing or the other. No country in the world. No. So what is the whole removing the subsidy? Okay. Look at the effect already. No. The domino effect on food on everything. Most houses and no power, no electricity. Most houses 
I, 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 I can't explain it. No lights. They can't even afford the fuel. Okay, uh, where? Unlike where, before, where you go to buy, you go to buy petrol for maybe uh, uh, two, three thousand naira. Now, two, three thousand naira petrol might just serve you out for just one hour, one hour, two, or one hour, thirty minutes. Unlike before, that you could, you could take you the all through the night. Okay. So this, this this subsidy, so, this subsidy. So this no subsidy removal, Openabo. This subsidy removal has been a yeah. long way coming. It's it, it's been it's been there. We've been talking about it and all that. We remember that when Jonathan was thinking about the idea, he bought buses that we saw all over the place, Shopee, Shopee, and all That's that. What I'm but saying, yeah. Ended up not removing it. Yes, it's understood. But now there's going to be strike because of the fuel subsidy removal and all that. And before the election, there's a video. Uh, making the rounds where uh, the president now was campaigning and he said no matter how much protest you you engage in fuel subsidy must be removed he said that he didn't give plans of how uh, when it is removed whatever was going to be done like some other candidates were talking about uh, gradual removal and things that will be put in place but he said no matter the amount of protests fuel subsidy will be removed and just right after that, he said, I will win this election. He has won the election. He has removed the fuel subsidy. Do you think, after the statement he made, it's on video, everybody watches it, it's on video. After the statement he made, do you think this strike will uh, solve any problem or there's another approach that could be used? The strike will solve the problem. Yes, it's going to be difficult uh, it's going to bring on to hardship on Nigeria, no doubt about that. But like I said, the only language the Nigerian government understands is strike. That's the only language. But with that strike, what else do you do? I will just going to accept whatever the government does. That's the only people we have is to go on strike. That's the only people. And even if you go to court, I can tell you that Nigerians have lost faith in, uh, in the division. Look at what happened uh, under uh, with TGK. Look at what happened. So the best thing is to ground the economy. People will tell you the president will not suffer. But it's going to be precursory of something if they take their head. Because when a government decides to be insensitive, it has signed its own warrant of its own debts. And you get shame should the rate of collapse on that level. Just less that that the very day people that look at the crisis and look at the problems, the very day to go. I told people that this man is getting into office for selfish reasons. He sees that this is the contrast as patrimony. That is my right. Out of over about two hundred million and it is your right. Because you are according to you made paper and so bloody words. You made people that you are controlling your colleagues. What happened to that You made people that will bring returns to you. What happened to that If I try, who told you? Are you, are you, are you more than you know that? That you say it's your right. Okay, well. So uh, the truth about it is that even if it becomes insensitive, you see, the nation has lapsed into a state of victimhood. A lot of people are incensed, they're angry. If it becomes insensitive to the plight of Nigerians, what will befall him and by extension the country will shock the world. Okay. People are bitter. First and foremost, the election, people are not happy with that outcome of the election. Okay. So when you say, hey, you said that and Nigerians voted, that, that, that is a lie. We all know that the elections are rigged, but the matter is important. Let's let's look people at. Are not even happy with the outcome of, no, I'm not happy with the outcome of the election. Let's look so at the related. Let's look at the related issue. We can't yeah. have a, a, a leader that is so callous and insensitive. Let's look at the related issue. Um, uh, we have these problems in the oil sector, but right now OPEC has raised Nigeria's um, uh, output as Saudi Arabia has cut production. The output for Nigeria has been raised by OPEC, the petroleum uh, exporting countries. Uh, so is that a good thing for us or something to really be afraid of? Because sometimes, for some time now, our production capacity has gone down. Now OPEC is raising our output 
and Saudi Arabia has cut their own production. Should we be happy about it or not? You see, ordinarily we should. But the problem with Nigeria is not the lack of funds. That's what you should understand. It has to do with the management of our funds. Now, most times the leaders, I call them vultures of our economy, economic predators. Most times, when we hear such good news, they are very happy. They are not happy because with money, the country will get enough money to, um, um, I would like to do it, with the interest of Nigerians, which is the primary role of the government. They are happy because they are going to make more money for themselves. Yes, I did it right, but look at what we had that we for. Look at what he did with the money. So, it is not about the policies, it is not about the monies we have. No, it's far from it. It has to do with cataclysmic leadership. They might not have gone on. He's probably because he was younger, much younger then. How can they come to say we have money, the problem is how to spend the money? How can you say that? Hey, the government won't even say that today. Then there was a military man who never went to school. Today he has a PhD, but probably because he was a military as that. But I said, how can you say, look at Dubai. Every day you go to Dubai, something new. You might miss your road. Why did he talk to Nigeria to Dubai? I said, so we have money, but the problem is how to spend it. So money is not a problem. The problem has to do with Leadership, leadership, bad leadership. So even if we make more money, the truth is the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. That is the truth about it. So whether it will increase our output, whether the output, if I, if the output increases, it means they, 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 they use money because they have enough money to sell in their pockets. There's a problem when the output reduces. Because then they are, they are wondering as to how to meet certain demands and certain needs. But once the output increases and you make more money, of course, then they sit down and start a popping campaign to the detriment of the masses. That is the truth. So it really has nothing. Look at Ghana. Look at the little money Ghana had when they are in distress. And look at Ghana today. Look at Magufili, of blessed memory. So it really has nothing to do with that to do with the leadership. So I'm not I'm not elected, I'm not happy, I'm not moved when they say the output will increase. If it increases, who's managing the resources? Mm. There was one we are regarded as one of you may, I, I tell people I say in 1986, as a little boy then we were traveling to to the US. I bought we bought dollar. Uh, one thousand dollars for six hundred naira. Yes, one thousand dollars for six hundred. Nineteen eighty-six. Yes. Yes. Mm. Oh yes. I just finished secondary school, and we were going on vacation. So you can imagine. So it has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the money. It has to do with the managers of your resources. That's all. So it's not yet a guru. It's no good news yet. Let us see how we are going to manage the effect of the increase, mm. the outcome. That is what we should concern ourselves with. Not uh, 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 how much that is coming into the country. No. Look at the, the seismic corruption that took place under the Okay. Um. Look at just a moment. Let me turn around <laughs> Okay, let's, 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 let's look at something uh, uh, more political. We've been talking oil, oil, and everything. Yeah, well, everything is connected to politics. But um, there is also uh, from uh, the, news, the Guardian newspaper uh, a headline saying, seven days into second term, so we'll look yet to appoint or make, make any appointments. And this caused across board. It's not only Sonolu, there are so many other uh, governors that have not made very tangible appointments and all that. And uh, 
for, for a governor that is returning, it's because a lot of them returned, it's not as if it's their first term, it's, it's a wonder why they would not make any appointments uh, in seven days, because it's expected that they have built a team, even if the people who were there in the first uh, tenure are not returning, but they have identified people who should work with them. Does it not give you any worry that some of them are taking too much time? Yes, my brother, uh, it has become a norm, and sadly too, you know, the truth is most of these governors, or even the presidents, I also ask the same question, I also wonder, you had the intention to contest, you have won, before and during the campaigns, you already know those that you want to have. Immediately after the election, what is delaying the appointment? Now, for this, it's even worse when it comes to the second term governors. Because second term, first term, you can say, I'm waiting for my godfather to give me the directives. Mm. These things happen. Let's face reality. You get into office, the godfather sits back to say, uh, first and foremost, every appointment must pass through me. They nominate about 90% of the appointees. They nominate. That's what these godfathers do. So probably the sitting, the new governor is waiting for his godfather. But that shouldn't be the case with the old governors, the second term governors. It shouldn't. Because you are already your own godfather, having served the first four years. Rather than being loyal to certain persons, people are now loyal to you except the likes of maybe the president and one or two other. But even at that, the, the, the person will give you maybe one, two or three names. Because you're already a sitting, you're a sitting governor when you contest. So you know you're a loyalist. So I can't comprehend it if it's also part of our mentality of big money. So that people will come groveling before you begging for a point. I, don't, I can't really understand it. Why seven days after even look at the presidency, seven days after no appointments. If I'm contesting, I already know those that I will give appointments to. At least I'll appoint 70 to 80 percent of my cabinet members. And maybe even leave the remaining 10 to 20 percent for the godfathers. That's, that's it. So I cannot comprehend it, my dear. I can't comprehend it. Because it has become a norm. It took about six months. This one now, seven days. Someone who is a sitting governor was a sitting governor when he contested. He's back. Is he going to tell me? Maybe he's also waiting for the president to, to nominate. And in the case of, excuse me, someone who is actually going to wait because his godfather is a sitting president. So he's actually going to wait. Especially the appointment of attorney general, appointment of finance commissioner, appointment of, he's going to wait for Mr. President, who was even the governor of, the, of Lagos State. In other states, the same thing. Even in River State. In other states, the same thing. They wait for the Godfathers. Mm. So Godfathers will never leave us the way it is. Everybody everybody campaigns because, and says that they are going to retire Godfathers, but it seems as if we are still here. The Godfathers that, will not leave us. That's a fitting illusion. You cannot retire Godfathers in Rivers in, in, in Nigeria. Do you know why? <laughs> Because of their financial might. You know, success many fathers say they are not mm. Once you're a governor, everybody comes to you trying to ingratiate himself with you. Once you're in office. And once you're out of office, they run away. You see only very few friends. So as at that time you're in office, you have also the financial might. Most people around you are not really your friends. They are criticizing you behind, but before you, they, they sing your praises. They mm. serenade you. But behind, they are castigating you left, right, and center. So, you are, you, you are, you are the one dictating the pace because of the financial muscle. And probably the one that is contesting does not even have that financial muscle and does not have somebody backing him with equal financial muscle. Okay. So, uh, Godfatherism must continue. Unless you, are, you have your Godfather is receiving governor. And maybe, so, yeah, sorry, the, your adversary is the sitting governor, and probably your godfather is like uh, a Tinubu 
or a dangle to us. Okay. But uh, even at that, you must have a godfather because you don't have the resources to fight a sitting governor who dole out the state's billions of naira. Where are you going to get a billion of naira? All right, so let's, you, let's, let's take a final thing. Let's let's take a final thing very briefly now, very briefly because we've uh, we really run out of time. Uh, we're, today we're celebrating World Environment Day. Uh, we've heard that uh, plastics uh, are the uh, major concern in uh, this year's celebration. In fact, the theme is beat plastic pollution, ecosystem restoration. So it hangs on plastic um, to beating that plastic so, uh, pollution and all that. Uh, but um, the general question is, where does Nigeria stand in the fight against um, environmental, what I call it degradation, or fighting against uh, uh, climate change and all the things that we need to fight if we need our environment to be clean? Where do we stand? Uh, and do you think we have that political I think it's a, question of, it's a question of culture. We don't have that culture. Mm. You know, um, the late uh, I wonder why who against his discipline, yeah. was trying to inculcate in us that culture. There was some level of sanity, you know, there was this uh, orderliness and so on, living at subs and so on. But with the sudden, uh, um, I was like, the other coup that took place, everything died. I think this guy came with y, YC or why against that corruption. I mean, it, it has to do with culture, more of culture. Mm -hmm. You see, under the Diabo, where the Diabo regime, military regime, you dare not litter the road. You don't throw it into the window when you're in the car. All cars have baskets and so on. So it's a culture thing. You, in, in civilized life, you can't even um, uh, trim the tree or cut the tree. Because the, it, 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 it plays its own role in our environment. Mm. You must seek the permission of the authorities to cut it through your house. Okay. That is the culture we are talking about, which is lacking here. So you see people living, drinking pure water and they can do the drinks and so on. And it, all of a sudden you have flooding and all. Most times this flooding is, is not as a result of the government's negligence. Mm. It has to do, in most times, they are caused by Nigerians themselves. Okay. Because you block the drains, and the water cannot flow. So it has to do with culture. Okay. And unfortunately, the Ministry of Environment is just there for nothing. I don't even know what Ministry of Environment is doing. Okay. Don't state and federal level. We don't, we don't have a Ministry of Environment yet. Uh, the old things no, have, I mean, I mean general, old things have passed away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's how we're going to wrap it up on this segment, <laughs> Ipunabo. Thank you. Uh, yeah, as okay. usual, it was, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Agaji. Thank you. Okay. We've been talking with Opunabo in Kotaria, political affairs analyst, uh, talking to us from River State. Today is World Environment Day, and we're hoping that you're doing everything to protect our environment, especially here in Lagos, where plastic bottles are everywhere blocking the drains and all that. This day, the theme of this um, uh, World Environment Day, Beat Plastic Pollution, Ecosystem Restoration, is talking to us directly. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>